Welcome back, grade 12 psychology class. We have another lecture. This is number four of the learning unit, operant conditioning and reinforcement. So we are onto a different type of conditioning, different type of learning. This is operant conditioning and it relates to key point one here, which is operational. We also have key point two, three, and four consequences, reinforcement and reinforcer. Let's get down to it. So, uh, suppose your dog is wandering around the neighborhood, sniffing trees, checking garbage cans, looking for squirrels to chase, and a neighbor sees your dog and tosses a bone out the kitchen door to it. The next day, the dog is likely to stop at the same door on its rounds, if not go directly to that door. Your neighbor produces another bone and another the next day, and your dog becomes a regular visitor. We've kind of all seen this before, maybe with a stray cat or the birds that our, we or our parents feed uh, or something like that. Maybe an unwanted visitor like a squirrel or a raccoon. Um, but this is an example of operant conditioning uh, where we learn from the consequences of behavior. So we have key point one and two here. Uh, the term operant is used because the subject operates or causes some change in the environment. It is operant because it is operational, this learning. We must do something um, to cause a change in the environment. This produces a result that influences whether the subject will respond in the same way in the future. This is essentially a consequence. It could be a good consequence or a bad consequence. By the dog repeatedly going to the door, the consequence of it was that it got a bone, and that's a good consequence. That is a reinforcement if you will, hint, hint to key point three. So depending on the effect of the operation or on the effect of the behavior, the learner will either repeat or eliminate these behaviors to get rewards or to avoid punishment. Um, so we're essentially gonna talk about how um, this type of learning works, where uh, an animal or a person operates on an environment and then deals with the consequences and learns something from it, either to increase that behavior or decrease that behavior. So how is it different from classical conditioning? One difference lies in how the experimenter conducts the experiment. Classical conditioning, the experimenter presents the conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus, and it really doesn't depend on if the participant wants to uh, behave or not, like or what it's doing beforehand. Uh, it just like you do it and they either learn it or they don't. They either connect the two uh, stimulus and response or they don't. It's independent of what the participant is doing at the time. Operant conditioning, the participant must be engaged in a behavior in order to be programmed uh, uh, for the programmed outcome to occur. Uh, in other words, operant conditioning is the study of how voluntary behavior is affected by its consequences. It requires the uh, subject to actually be voluntarily acting on its environment before you can uh, deliver a reinforcement or a punishment. And then we can study how that behavior, how that voluntary behavior is affected by consequences. And we can study this all the time. Does it, if kids in class offer answers, how does the consequences, or how are they treated after, how they're responded to, how does that affect uh, their behavior of answering questions in class in the future? So reinforcement was the term that B.F. Skinner decided to give to uh, a reward, if you will, or a, uh, a punishment to stop or encourage a behavior. So B.F. Skinner has been the psychologist most closely associated with operant conditioning. Pavlov is classical. B.F. Skinner is uh, operant conditioning. And he believed most behavior is influenced by a person's history of rewards and punishments. Skinner trained rats to respond to lights and sounds in an enclosure called a Skinner's box. Not a great box, to be honest, but that's uh, beside the point. And conduct, to conduct this experiment, he placed a rat in the box, and the rat had to learn to solve the problem to get food to appear in the cup. And uh, Skinner would reinforce the good behaviors, kind of like... Uh, you're getting hotter, you're getting warmer, you're getting colder. Uh, someone moves around the room towards something that they're trying to find. Uh, positive reinforcement or give them good things when they do something good and uh, give them punishment or negative reinforcement when they do something bad. So usually, um, th 
this is accomplished in steps, like getting the rat to get through the box. So uh, the how you how the rat gets through is by pressing a bar on the cage uh, on the cage wall. So first the rat's going to explore the box, and when the rat moves towards the bar, uh, the experimenter will drop food into the cup. And the food is very important to the rat, so it's realized, or it's going to realize, that when it gets close to the bar, it gets food, and it's going to like that, so it's going to move closer to the bar more often. After the rat begins to approach the cup for food consistently, the experimenter begins to drop food into the cup only when the rat has actually pressed against the bar. Uh, the rat will soon learn that it not only needs to get close to the bar now, it needs to actually press it to get the food. So when the rat is hungry, it will eventually press the bar to get food. It will uh, learn that the consequences of pressing the bar is to receive food. Uh, it has learned something. It has uh, taken the consequences of its actions and now uh, decided that it's going to repeat that action. So the food that appears in the cup is a reinforcer in this experiment. So that's key point four, reinforcer. Reinforcement can be defined as the stimulus or event that increases the likelihood that a behavior will be repeated. So what are you giving or the action that you're doing? Like what are you uh, doing to help uh, or make that organism happy when it has uh, done that behavior uh, in order to increase the likelihood that it will do it again? Whether or not the particular stimulus is a reinforcement depends um, on the effect the stimulus has on a learner. So uh, for rats, you pretty much can only give food. There's not much else you can give a rat that will make it happy. Uh, but people can, uh, humans can respond to social approval, can respond to money, uh, extra privileges. Uh, food obviously for people works as well, but there are more things that you can give humans as reinforcement. Uh, these are examples of reinforcers, essentially. Your job is a couple of important terms and then looking into reinforcement schedules. There are a couple of different types, uh, I think four in all. And if you have questions about those, I encourage you to ask myself or ask your classmates. Uh, but thanks so much for watching everyone. And if you have questions, please let me know. Thanks.